So when I had started weightlifting, it, it seemed like a very vulnerable position that I had put myself into. Maybe less so for me because I've been in competitive endeavors before, but when you go compete, you're in a room you haven't been in, usually, uh, about to lift a bar that you've never lifted in before in front of a bunch of strangers, and you're wearing very revealing clothing. Uh, it's called a singlet, and it's, you know, reveals your legs, it reveals your upper body. But quickly, that sort of stuff just fades away because all anyone in the room cares about is performance and wanting to see people do the best they can. I was just at the uh, Arnold Expo, which is just a massive expo for all things fitness, uh, strength sport. They had strong, the Rogue Strongman competition and the weightlifting meet that's attached to the Arnold Expo had 1,800 competitors. So from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., from Thursday to Sunday, there were six platforms constantly running of competition. That means in the back room, there are 10 additional platforms per six platforms, so 60 platforms of people running around, making sure they're getting warmed up, moving, trying to do the best they can to perform. So while all of this is going on, no one gives a shit about what other people look like. Even if you did, even if you did see someone, you go, oh, well, she's hot or he's hot or he's jacked. She's fucking jacked or he's fat. She's fat. Like if you're doing something like that, you're not focusing on performance. You're not focusing on getting your athlete ready. You're not focusing as the athlete on getting ready to perform, right? So it's a really beautiful thing. And, and having done this for a while, it's like, I don't, I don't notice like what people look like. I don't give a shit. And that's, that's not me trying to be very virtuous. It's like, I just don't have time. Like I don't have the bandwidth to care about it. So when I got into YouTube and, and thrust into the limelight a little more, it definitely was jarring to see people and the amount of comments talking about how I look or how a certain person looks, but then I got used to it. And now, now it's just understood, you know, that's just how the world works is like, you know, the beauty of weightlifting that I see in person, you know, might not always translate to the masses. And I understand that I have been, you know, people comment on the way that I look every single day. And yes, it hurts a little bit, but also I know what I signed up for. You know, if I can't take the heat, I gotta get out of the kitchen. But sometimes I wonder, why is the kitchen so goddamn hot? Like, is there anything we can change? And I would love, I would love to change the way people think. I would love to have people kind of understand the essence of these strength sports that you can only really understand once you get in the room of it, really. But anyways, the reason I'm bringing this up is because Nat Arem, who is the creator of Hook Grip, and for those of you who don't know Hook Grip, they have a YouTube channel that they've stopped posting on because they focus more on Instagram. They have a really, really good equipment store for weightlifting. They do posters, t-shirts. Their equipment is really, really good. And I know Nat personally, but he was on a podcast with Seb from Weightlifting House, the Weightlifting House podcast. And in it, he said some things that people found controversial. So we're gonna listen to those exact things. As a group of like media people, we give more attention to certain lifters than we do others. Do you feel like there are some lifters who for some reason just don't get popular despite the fact that people post them, um, they're really amazing. And then on the flip side, are there people who it's like, how did you get so famous where like, you're not even like necessarily the best lifter or maybe you are really good, but like nobody's been posting about you. Like, do you find that there are a few outliers where you're like, how did that lifter get so popular or how, how are they still not so popular? Yeah, there's, there's definitely examples. I mean, it's tough for me to think of people off the top of my head. Right. Um, but a, I mean, a lot of it, I mean, let's just be real. Like a lot of it comes down to like aesthetics. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's sad and I'm sure, you know, the, the woke crowd or whatever would be very upset with the idea that the better looking someone is the more popular they are or whatever. Right. But as though that wasn't um, how high school was. Yeah. 
yeah i mean that's that's just kind of like human nature it's just yeah, like it's it it, it 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 is what it is you know what i yeah. mean and like you can't you know you can't really stop it and especially with the way that algorithms work i mean you're not gonna you know get someone who is kind of like uh i don't know if like this is the right term to use because like someone will probably get mad at me for this but if someone's like not really an aesthetic lifter mm -hmm. you know you're not gonna they're not gonna be more popular than someone who has like like you know a, basically a good basically athletic looking muscular figure or whatever mm -hmm. it's just yeah, not yeah, yeah. you know like for instance uh you know no you're not you're not going to get some like random like fat dude to get be more popular than Lou because like Lou's walking around with like you know big traps. And, I like, don't know. Maybe, maybe Lash, if you call Lasher a blah. random fat dude, then Lasher maybe. <laughs> you know, he's I, not I feel a like random there's a fat little, dude though. Th there's a little bit of an exception for I would say male supers yeah, in yeah. the and I, I'm talking about in like the, the public. Uh, I don't know what to call it, like the zeitgeist or whatever. Like just in like the general public feeling. Like people, people seem willing to excuse, excuse male supers for being fat, yeah. but they, they don't seem to be willing to, you know, do that for female supers, which I think is kind of sad because, yeah. uh, they're, you know, the, the female supers and don't get me wrong. The female supers are fat. You know, anyone who yeah. says the female supers aren't fat is wrong. No, not, yeah. not Kashi Rina. She wasn't really fat, but like, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the in in general the female supers are fat and so are the male supers they're all yeah. fat like, yeah. they're fat you know if, if if someone tries to say they're not fat they're just they're just lying to themselves mm -hmm. however they're like exceptionally talented athletes mm -hmm. okay so let's break this down a little bit i think the first part nat says um you know people are going to be more attracted to more aesthetic looking lifters and that you know that's the truth. And, and again, from my perspective, it's not the truth. From the perspective of the people in the uh, weightlifting community, it's usually not the truth. But from the general population, if we were to grow this sport, it's a higher likelihood that people are going to care about the people that they find attractive. And that sucks. It sucks, but it's the way things are. There are lifters out there, I'm not going to name names or examples, who aren't as good as others, who are way more prevalent and have much more fame than those who, you know, are objectively better than them. I can use myself as an example. I mean, I have many more followers on YouTube and on Instagram than when I, when I was competing than my other competitors, uh, you know, these coaches that I coach against are objectively better than myself, but yet I'm more prevalent than them on social media. But before he gets into anything really controversial, he actually kind of points out a, 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 a hypocrisy that we see. And that is that we let males get away with being quote unquote fat more than we let women, um, especially in weightlifting. And, uh, you know, if anything, he says that that's unfair and I would have to agree with him. I think that is unfair. And I think that hopefully there's a way that we can change the way people think about that. I think the real controversy comes from Nat and his delicacy or lack thereof when using the word fat. And we now live in a world where fat is a pejorative term. And uh, if you use it, you have to be prepared, uh, you know, for the heat in the woke kitchen. You know, I talked about the kitchen from those who talk about aesthetics. Well, there's the opposing side of that. It's kind of the world we live in now. And I'm not going to sit here and bitch about woke communities or anything like that. All I'm saying is there are, there are people out there who are going to hear this and they're just going to hear those words. When maybe something that Nat is actually pointing out is that the general population has this flaw. They are different than the weightlifting world. Maybe what Matt Nat should have said is, you know, even though that's what the general population thinks, I can't turn my back on the weightlifting world because these are my people. They made me who I am. And if I'm going to sit here, I'm kind of on that boat. 
You know, I, I can't turn my back on the people that made me. Even though my goal right now is to try and grow this channel beyond just the niche sport that is weightlifting. I hope that people outside of this sport care about me. I want to continue to grow, but it's, I, I don't want to turn my back on them. So regardless of what the genu general population thinks, I have to be guided towards the weightlifters of this world. Look, I don't know what the answer is, whether we say that we can't use the word fat or we can, uh, what the way people should talk. All I know is this. It's like, it seems as though, you know, gym culture has changed. We're getting women to lift weights. And I promise you guys, 10 years ago, that was not the case. Women are lifting weights on Instagram. Their, their mindsets around training is, is changing. They're not going to look thin or all these things. They're understanding that if they increase their metabolic rate by growing muscle, by eating and growing muscle and lifting weights and maybe lifting heavy weights, that they're going to look the way they want to. We're seeing that happen a lot more, but maybe that's not actually changing anything because it is still about aesthetics. Like even though lifting weights is empowering and it's a little bit more fun and it's actually more healthy, we're still, it's all about aesthetics. And who knows if that's ever going to change. But if we are to take things and bring them into the general population, I don't know if, 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 if it's going to matter. I really don't. I'm very pessimistic about this thing, you know, cause, cause I'm someone who's come from the bubble and I have left the bubble and I've seen both sides. There are the foam finger holding Americans that just root for people like The Rock, Chris Hemsworth. Uh, you know, they go to see Fast and the Furious. They see Marvel movies. And it's not that they don't care whether they use steroids. They don't know and they're ignorant, right? And those people make up the vast majority of this world. And I don't know that will ever be able to change the way that they observe the world because it's just not in their lexicon. You and I sitting here right now, and I always make this point, like we are not like them. And that's again, just an observation because I'm having this conversation about the way people look and, and strength and all of these things. And a lot of people don't even know what strength training really is. They don't even understand these things and, and they're not going to because they got to go to work tomorrow. They gotta pay bills, they gotta pay taxes. We, I mean, we all have to do that, but at this point I'm just rambling. But what I really wanna know is like, what is the cure to this? Like this, this did cause a little bit of an uproar in my tiny little community that people outside of it don't really care about. But I wanna know from you guys, like where do we go? Like, is it that bad? Is it not that bad? Are things actually changing? Cause in my opinion, it seems as though they're changing, but they're not really. You know, there's more information about fitness these days than there ever has been. And tomorrow there's going to be more than that. And yet we're still more obese in the world than we ever have been. And tomorrow we will be more obese. And even though we see lifters who have larger bodies break American records, world records, we're still going to see, you know, People call them fat. Are these things going to change? Do they need to change? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.